Hello, my name is Ian Nepomuceno, and today I'm doing my project on if a vector function can be expressed as a gradient of another function, then the vector function is conservative and the curl must equal zero. So, to begin, uh, suppose we have some vector function A, and we know that that could be expressed as the gradient of some other function B. And we know that is true. So we want to find that or prove that the curl of A is equal to zero. And one way of proving something is equal to zero is by proving that it is equal to its negative self. So by proving that If we could prove this statement true, then it also proves this statement true, which is the statement we want to prove in the beginning. So the first step that I'm going to do is just by replacing um, the gradient of B and for A. So we have some curl of some gradient B. And I'm going to approach this proof by using some index notation. So I'm just going to box the entirety of this term and then just denote it with letter I. And then I'm going to say that is equal to the ijk uh, partial j partial k of uh, b. So in the calculus series, one or in partial differentials, one thing that we learned is that the order of which you take a partial differentials of a function does not matter. So uh, we could, since these two partials are both acting on the B, we could switch the order of these. So we get this is equal to ijk partial k partial j of B or B. And since we now have the order switched, it's tiered. We want it to also align with the Levy Sita notation as well. So, um, right now, um, the Levy Sita is in cyclic, but if we wanted to have it in order with the partials, we would want to turn it to anti cyclic. So, when we turn it to anti cyclic, uh, we put a negative sign in front of the Levy Sita, so we get Levy Sita i k j partial k partial j b. And from here, we could extract, pull this negative sign on the outside and say that this is equal to i k j partial k partial j b. And if you look, this is almost exactly uh, the same as what we started with over here. So then we could just plug it, revert it back to this term. So we get equals negative. And that is equal to so since we prove this statement is true that means that this is also equal to zero and therefore a is conservative For my example problem, suppose we have some vector function f, which is as shown, and we want to solve the line integral from this point to this point over path, some path p, which is shown here, some weird looking path. So the first thing that we could do is just take the, uh, find the curl of f to see if the function is conservative. And if the function is conservative, we could negate the path p and use some simpler path, which would be easier to solve. So if we take the curl of f, we will get
and this is also equal to zero. So the curl of f is equal to zero. And since the curl of f is equal to zero, uh, that means f is a conservative vector function, and we can negate path p since it is a conservative vector function. Um, it is not path dependent. Um, so since we know that this is uh, f is a conservative function, we know that we could express the vector function f as equal to some gradient of some other function, little f. Okay. And if we could solve what little f is, we could uh, use the theorem of calculus, fundamental theorem of calculus, to be able to solve this line integral much simpler than um, doing it over path p and with the vector function f. So one way of solving this is by noticing that since this is true, uh, that means the gradient of f must equal to this. And the gradient of f is equal to the partial of f with respect to x i hat plus partial of x respect to y j hat plus partial of z k hat. So we have these three equations, and if you notice that, that means this partial uh, in respect to x must equal this first term right here. This partial with respect to y must equal this second term right here. And then this partial right here must equal this third term right here. And if we take the antiderivative uh, of each one, then we are able to solve for f, little f. So we notice that we get partial f of x is equal to 3x squared y z minus 3y partial of f with respect to y. So we have these three equations for uh, each of the partials, and um, if we take the antiderivative in respect to each one, um, it will hopefully be able to give us a good idea of what f is. So by taking the antiderivative of this first one, we get f is equal to x to the third y z minus 3yz. And since there might be terms that got cut off when we took the partial derivative of this um, in respect to y and z, we're going to add two other arbitrary functions as placeholders for now. And we're just going to call those g of y and a to z. And we're going to do the same thing for these other two. F is equal to Oops, I made a little mistake. And I'm going to add a placeholder for. Some other function that might have been in respect to x that got cut off, and then we're also going to have the a to z. And then lastly, so we have these three functions. Um, and as we can see, we have the same, these two terms are on each of the three, so these will all are going to be in it, so And since we have this extra z squared in here, and we have 
uh, we're gonna add it down here because it might have just been got cut off uh, when we take the partials. Um, and that's why we have these placeholders right here just for the meantime. So this is our function of f, which we want to want. And by using the fundamental theorem of calculus, we know that the line integral between two points um, of some gradient function is just f of b minus f of a. And f of b corresponding to this point right here, and f of a corresponding to the first point right here. So if we have this function right here, f of a, um, as you can see, we have a zero it, for y and z, so all three terms are canceled out, so we'll have f of a is equal to zero, and f of b, so we have two, three, zero, so we have a zero term right here, two, three, so negative nine times two is negative 18, and then we have a zero here, so that term is canceled out, so we get negative 18. Uh, which is our final answer. So we just showed how uh, solving a line integral um, of, a of a conservative vector function is easier over some path compared to some arbitrary path which may be more difficult to solve if it's not a conservative vector field. Um, some applications that this appears in physics are some gravitational potentials, uh, electric uh, 